So Derrick Henry and the Baltimore Ravens just put the Dallas Cowboys and the rest of the National Football League on notice with an NFL season high of 274 total rushing yards. Derrick Henry finds the identity of this Baltimore Ravens offense. 25 carries, 151 rushing yards, two touchdowns, running all over the Cowboys defense. While the Ravens have some problems, some things to overcome, some issues to resolve before they play the Buffalo Bills, the Cincinnati Bengals, and some other tough opponents on their schedule, it feels a lot better to be solving those problems in the win category, in the win column, versus uh, chewing on that loss. Lamar Jackson with 139.4 passer rating, 12 of 15, 182 yards. Clutch throw we're going to talk about to ice the game to Zay Flowers late in the game after the Ravens were struggling to hold on to a lead. So welcome into another episode of Ravens Reports. In this episode, we have our top five takeaways and storylines from this Ravens versus Cowboy game reaction. We got clips from the pressers, the good, the bad, the ugly, and much more. So let's dive in. Ad number one we got to talk about what Derrick Henry did. He imposed his will. He said enough is enough, and he actually challenged the offensive line and said, hey, as you guys go, we go as a team. He challenged the offensive line, and they stepped up to that challenge. And Now, it wasn't always pretty in pass protection, but they opened up some lanes and some holes for Derrick Henry to absolutely rumble his 250-pound yoked-up self through. He runs rampant. I mean, stiff arms, jukes, speed, power, you know, different run formations out of the pistol, out of the shotgun, under center, just different types of formations where we really got Derrick Henry going, and it feels like this was a stepping stone for the Baltimore Ravens to find their identity. And then on top of the rushing, Derrick Henry added a catch for 23 yards. So he goes over 170 total yards, two touchdowns. Absolute dominant performance by Derrick Henry. And then Lamar Jackson sprinkled in some of the, the quarterback designed run game, 14 carries for 87 yards and a touchdown, averaging 6.2 yards per rush. And then Justice Hill, super efficient, Five carries, 33 yards, 6.6 yards a touch with a long of 17. And then Zay Flowers, one carry for three yards. The Ravens rushing tack, man, found their groove. And um, I know it was against a soft Cowboys run defense, but it was a huge stepping stone momentum moving forward. Uh, Some different concepts we incorporated, just a big confidence boost. Sometimes it feels like you just need a spark, right? You just need something to get you going. And it felt like this game was that spark. At number two, let's talk about this Ravens secondary real quick because while it they, they gave up a lot of late garbage time yards, I thought they were much improved, especially in the first half of the game. I don't know why we started to break down towards the end of the game. A lot of the first downs the Cowboys were given were gifted by the refs, um, but the, it felt like, in the, especially in the first half, the secondary finally married with the pass rush where you know the rush was getting there and you know while the rush was getting there the secondary was glued tight and it felt like we were a little bit more intentional to get up in the grill of these receivers and you know press a little bit more have tight coverage versus like more soft zones which has felt like what we shifted towards towards the the end of the game um i'd have to go back and verify that and see the see the data but that's my initial impression off watching the game uh, Nate Wiggins, he gets in on the action with a game-changing force fumble on C.D. Lamb. The guy has proved to be a playmaker in his short stint in the NFL. He almost had another pass breakup on C.D. The ball was jarred, and it was about to fall off, but C.D. corralled it and, and made the catch. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, I also thought he had pretty tight coverage all day. It feels like some of the, the big chunks we give up um, are just like – open passing lanes over the middle of the field. There was a couple of nice ones like contested catches Jake Ferguson made where the the receiver just, you know, the tight end made a good play on the football. However, I just thought as a whole, uh, don't let the simple, the stats, you know, fool you, um, especially with some of the the play calling, the lack of aggressiveness and um, garbage time yards. I know it ended up not being garbage time, but it felt like the Ravens second the defense and the coaching staff as a whole said, oh, 28-6, only 11 minutes to go. We're good. Just don't give up the touchdown over our head. But I felt like we should have stayed aggressive and put our foot on the gas there. Lamar Jackson said the same thing. At number three, let's talk about these wide receivers. While this wasn't a pass-heavy game because we were up on a lead trying to run out the clock most of the day, 
um, these wide receivers, when they had their opportunities, made very uh, well on those opportunities. First of all, I thought the most impressive play of the game by any Raven uh, was the play from Lamar Jackson to Zay Flowers on, I think it was third and six or third and eight, something like that. Uh, end of the game, we need a first down so we can run out the clock. Lamar Jackson drops back, three-step drop, hits his back hitch, plants his foot in the turf, and rips it to Zay Flowers, who found some nice separation against the top-tier corner in Trevon Diggs. I mean, but it was just a beautiful, on-time, three-step drop, great route, great throw, textbook, you know, back against the wall, just a good football play, right, where they know you're going to pass it, you have to pass it to get this first down, and you put your foot in the dirt and you rip it to an uh, to your receiver, your number one receiver there, and Zay Flowers. Obvious passing situation, and you had to get it done through the air, and we showed we could do it. I thought that was that was great progress, um, especially because Micah Parsons was about to come through. Uh, Justice Hill was helping to chip with Patrick McCarry, the right tackle, uh, but you know there was pressure getting there quick, so Lamar Jackson had to rip it. We'll talk about the offensive line here in a second, but another receiver I've been impressed with is Rashad Bateman. He can, he continues to have a, a strong start to the year, averaging 15.1 yards per catch. Um, I think Bateman needs to be even more involved. I think he needs to have more targets. But the route that he got open on for that touchdown catch, that touchdown grab from Lamar, I mean, he absolutely got, I think it was Donovan Wilson, turned around, completely turned around, got uh, open right through the middle of the field, easy pitch and catch for the touchdown. Great route by, by Rashad Bateman. And then Nelson Aguilar, only one catch, but he made the most of his opportunity 56 yards after breaking a tackle. And he he put his foot in the ground and ran upfield after he broke that tackle. He almost took it to the house. Safety tracked him down with the angle a few yards short of the end zone. But great play uh, by Nelson Aguilar. Receivers made the most of their opportunities. Tight ends were relatively quiet today. Um, you know, pass catchers as a whole, we didn't throw the ball a lot. You know, we only had 15 attempts, and Lamar Jackson still goes over 180 passing yards on those 50 attempts. Super efficient through the air, despite not having a lot of volume. At number four, the offensive line, um, they had their moments, all right? I'm not going to pretend like all is well now. All is not well, but there was improvement. Um, it still looks like there is no trust from the coaching staff and it's good that the coaching staff at least recognizes it but there's no trust for true drop back passing situations that the offensive line is going to hold their weight they're just there's no belief okay there's third and six early in the game we call a quarterback design run um you know we're we're constantly chipping we don't trust a five-man pass protection plan which i don't blame the ravens coaching staff for that at least they had a plan for the offensive line deficiencies but we made it easy on the offensive line, you know, compared to some of the game plans we've had in the past. We call that quarterback run on third down. We threw a, we threw a ton of screens where they're not asked to hold up. Uh, we ran the football a lot. Uh, we had a good game plan for the Cowboys pass rush, but it's clear we just don't trust true pass protection yet. Now, Daniel Falele did improve. Um, that's been the, obviously the biggest gripe from the fan base is wanting to see Ben Cleveland at right guard or Patrick McCarry slide in at right guard and then, um, you know, Rosengarten get out there at right tackle. Rosengarten was not in on the action, which is a little bit of a surprise. I would like to see him out there, but I guess they were saying, hey, not this week, bud, not against Micah Parsons. Falele did improve, but he did get absolutely smoked on one or two uh, pass pro reps, and there wasn't a lot. So, the win rate wasn't great in true pass pro um, reps because there was only like, we didn't really drop back and throw it like that. We had a couple of boots, screens, stuff like that. But in true pass pro situations, there was only a couple. Like you can count them on probably one hand how many true drop back situations we had. And there was one where um, the, the defensive tackle, I mean, smoked right by Falele for an immediate pressure. However, the biggest improvement that Falele did have was as a run blocker, which was, you know, progress because he has he had been struggling a little bit as a run blocker, but he opened up some lanes for Derrick Henry to cut through. I still want to see changes. I still want to see what Ben Cleveland looks like at right guard. Maybe Passion McCarry at right guard. I still want to see Rosengarten. I don't think that we we have right now, I'm not saying we won't, but right now we don't have a Super Bowl caliber offensive line. To where we're in those obvious patching situations that we can trust to hold up or you know to to hold up trying to throw the football downfield 
right now we're relying on the running game. Lamar in the running game, Derrick Henry in the running game, wide receiver screens, quick stuff over the middle of the field. We're not trusting downfield passing concepts right now, which does not make us a complete offense that can threaten you in, in every single way and threaten every single blade of grass. Um, that this it's gonna have to, we're gonna have to have some changes if we want to have a true Super Bowl caliber offense, in my opinion. At number five. Um, other notes. All right. So Trenton Simpson, I thought he looked really good. He had a nice pass breakup on Jake Ferguson in a big time moment there. Um, Justice Hill, he looks good, man. He looks explosive. He looks shot out of a cannon. It's like a nice little change of pace and like fresh legs uh, whenever he comes in for, for Derrick Henry. And I liked how they got him in on some carries because it felt like before, anytime Justice Hill was on the field, we were going to throw the football. But the Ravens tried to go against that tendency today. Got him five carries, 33 yards, averaged the most yards per carry out of any ball carrier on the team. Uh, Charlie Kohler, underrated guy so far, man. He's made some nice blocks, but we had to give him some love in this game really nice block i think he he uh sprung justice hill open on a run and then we had that beautiful fake toss and then um you know kind of like a, a boot where we got lamar jackson moving out of the pocket threw it to charlie kohler who's traditionally a blocking tight end in our offense we went against that tendency and he rumbles downfield for a 30 yard gain uh shout out to charlie kohler who had a really nice game and has been a, a nice Solid th number three tight end for the Ravens. It's funny because each week, a different tight end led the Ravens in receiving yards. Week one, it was Isaiah Likely over 100 yards against the Chiefs, nine catches, 111 yards, and a touchdown. And then uh, week two, you know, Mark Andrews, I think he has like 56 yards or so. He leads the tight ends in receiving. And then Charlie Kohler in week three goes one catch, 30 yards. So each week, a different tight end has led the Ravens in receiving yards, which I think sh kind of shows these guys can all block, they can all catch, and they're going to keep defenses off balance. They're a huge part of the offense. If you're still watching by now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. A 28-6 to lead with 11 minutes to go. It might feel safe. But it's not in today's NFL. And it started with like a downpour of events. When we've been in these situations before, you can blame someone on, on coaching, maybe the lack of, um, you know, driving the, the dagger for the finishing blow, you know, and, and putting the game on ice. But at, at the end of the day, a player's got to step up and, and make a, and then make that blow, right? Um you can't have a missed 48-yard field goal. Justin Tucker has missed three crucial field goals now. You know, we might be 3-0 if he makes those field goals. Um, obviously, we're 1-2 and two right now, and there's, other, and there's other factors besides Tucker. I'm not trying to put all the blame on Tucker, but we miss a field goal. And then in the fourth quarter, we have over 100 penalty yards. We'll talk about those in a second. Uh, and then a dropped, a fumbled onside kick by Zay Flowers. And then, you know, what about that no intentional grounding call where he's getting sacked in the end zone and throws it to his offensive lineman, which is illegal. You can't do that. And there's no uh, intentional grounding call, no safety, and the refs bail out the Cowboys. And then they bail out the Cowboys again late in the game when they're trying to drive and get back in the game. And, um, you know, Dafe Owe puts a perfect textbook form tackle on Dak Prescott on time as he's releasing the ball. It's not a late hit. Um, right around the hips, like right around his butt, his his thighs, you know, wasn't too low. It wasn't too high. Right where you're supposed to tackle. Beautiful, you know, form textbook tackle. And he gets called for roughing the passer. Um, and and Matabike probably should have two sacks that he's been taken away from, the Gardner Minshew one last week where he, he sacked Gardner Minshew, grabbed him on the chest, and was able to pull him down. Um, but it got called for, for a face mask, which clearly not a face mask. And then today he should have had a sack for safety um, that got taken away from him because Dak Prescott decided that, hey, if I throw it to my offensive lineman with no eligible receiver in the area, then, then the refs will save me. And I won't have a intentional grounding call. All the NFL rules analysts, the the media guys, everyone's saying, hey, this is bogus. Why are the refs trying to get the Cowboys back in the game? So it's penalties, you know, 100 penalty yards in the fourth quarter on top of uh, a missed field goal, on top of a fumbled onside kick, on top of 
you know, a poor pass coverage play, and it just compiles and snowballs to the point where, you know, we let the Cowboys get that close to where you're on the edge of your seat when you should be kicked back, you know, um, watching the Ravens run the clock out uh, in a not stressful manner. The Ravens are going to have to find a way to get better in these situations. Someone's going to have to step up and make a play. Maybe the coaching staff needs to be more aggressive uh, whenever they do have that big lead in the fourth quarter. Hey, maybe hit them with some play action. Put the dagger to to a dart to Isaiah Likely or Mark Andrews over the middle of the field. We also probably could have went for it on that fourth down. I get trying to get the points there to make it an even bigger lead, but we can't ch- trust Justin Tucker anymore to make uh, – you know, anything past, what, 45 yards? You know, I hate to say it, but he's been terrible in long-distance field goals over the last season and a half. Overall, though, like I said, the Ravens having their problems feels a lot better to work through those problems, get better, um, work on your issues in the win column, in the win category. They have a big-time matchup against the Buffalo Bills on Sunday Night Football. They're going to have a slight advantage because, first of all, they're at home. Second of all, they have more rest. They're going to be able to watch the Buffalo Bills play tonight on Monday Night Football in preparation already, you know, a whole day ahead as far as rest and tactical um, game planning strategy advantage. The Ravens better take advantage of that because the Buffalo Bills are a scrappy football team. Josh Allen, we know what he can do. Uh, We'll talk about that in the upcoming preview, so make sure you got your subscribing notification bell on, man. I love you guys. I appreciate you all. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's content, and we'll see you in the next video. He ran me over.